the EU is expected to outline objections to Boris Johnson's new Brexit plan. The British Prime Minister has delivered the documents to Brussels, what he calls a fair and reasonable compromise on the so-called Irish backstop. That was negotiated by his predecessor, intended to keep trade flowing with the EU, but prevent a hard border between Ireland and Northern Ireland in a post-Brexit world. Of all the complexity of Brexit, the question of how the UK can withdraw from the EU and avoid a border with Ireland remains a problem without a solution. And the new Johnson plan is light on how he can succeed where others failed. And that is raising speculation he's playing to lose, to blame the EU for rejecting his plan and for all the chaos which follows. At the Conservative Party's annual gathering, he rallied the faithful, promising Brexit will happen on time by the end of this month, despite a law that prohibits Britain leaving the EU without a deal, something Johnson calls the Surrender Bill. That is why we are coming out of the EU on October the 31st, come what may. Conference... <laughs> Conference... Let's... Let's get Brexit done. We can, we must, and we will, even though things have not been made easier by the surrender bill. CNN's European Affairs commentator Dominic Thomas joins us now from Los Angeles. OK, Dominic, here is the Prime Minister, a little more from him in his own words on withdrawing the UK from the EU and at the same time avoiding that border on the island of Ireland. Here he is, listen to this. We will, under no circumstances, have checks at or near the border in Northern Ireland. We will respect the peace process and the, the Good Friday Agreement. And, at the same time, we will allow the UK whole and entire to withdraw from the EU with control over our own trade policy from the start. It's all great stuff. The only problem, it seems, is that those two statements cannot coexist. Um, what I think it's an either-or proposition, and Johnson hasn't really explained how they can happen simultaneously. Right, he has not, John. And so, with Theresa May's deal, it was quite straightforward. They negotiated with the European Union, the withdrawal agreement um, was all set, and in the transition period, Northern Ireland would remain in the single market and in the customs union in what was called a backstop. The backstop is a synonym for an insurance policy. What Boris Johnson has done and the changes that he's enacted here is to essentially argue that Scotland, Wales and England should be fully extricated from the European Union and that Northern Ireland, so that there would not have to be checks with the Republic of Ireland, would remain in the single market for a determined period and that every four years, the, essentially the Northern Irish, the Stormont, the Assembly would get to revisit that arrangement. The problem with that is that the removal of this insurance policy is essentially Boris Johnson asking the European Union to trust him, which is something that they are simply not willing to do, and that the Republic of Ireland will not go along with this, and then the other 26 EU countries with the Republic of Ireland, the 27, will simply not go along with that. So there's changes, there's proposals here, but it does not deal with the fundamental question of protecting the integrity of the trade relationship, the personal relationship, of the island of Ireland or the integrity of the European Union's policy. And so this deal will go nowhere for just those few reasons. California utility giant uh, PG&E announced that it's filing for bankruptcy, facing at least $7 billion in claims for the deadly wildfire known as the Camp Fire. Now, it's believed that fire was started when a power line came in contact with trees. And it's not the first time the company's been under investigation for fires in California, not by a long shot. Less than a month ago, Drew Griffin reported on years of investigations finding PG&E failed to follow state regulations to maintain equipment. California fire officials said that in one month in 2017 alone, PG&E equipment caused 17 out of 18 fires, often after falling branches or trees came into contact with power lines. The CEO of PG&E also has stepped down. The company says it's going to look for a replacement with, quote, extensive operational and safety expertise.
I just want everybody to know that these challenges or whatever they're watching on YouTube is not worth your risking your life. I mean, my son got burned second degree and it could have been way worse. Tabitha Clearly's world as a mom has been rocked. Her son Jason suffering from second degree burns from his chin, chest, and stomach. It happened Saturday in Dearborn Heights. Jason was at a friend's house, and then suddenly she could hear her son screaming right outside. So we came running out, and that's when his friend Bryce was riding him on the bike with no shirt on. And I immediately started to freak out. I'm like, take him to the hospital, take him to the hospital. I'm starting to cry, he's crying. The 12-year-old spent the last four days at Children's Hospital's burn unit, all because of this. <laughs> the fire challenge on YouTube where kids set each other on fire. One of Jason's friends sprayed him with nail polish remover and could have killed him. First time that it was like a little tiny fire, then they swatted it out, then the second time it golfed and they kept spraying it on me. Once my dad finally uh, opened the door and said, let's go to the hospital, yeah, I was in the back seat, still in much, much pain. And I can feel his pain, and it's, it's, it's heartbreaking.